What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scoobin Marina. And if you are new to our channel, do me a huge favor, click this little subscribe button right here and ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now I got my daughter Tessa out to do another search and recovery video. And if you couldn't tell by the title, this is gonna be her second search and recovery video. But the cool thing about this is, She's going to be doing it on her own. Now, don't worry. Yes, I'm going to be in the water with her, but I'm not doing anything on this dive but simply being her dive buddy. She's going to do the pre-dive interview with our client. She's going to do the dive plan, and she's going to do the search all on her own. Now, if we get into a situation where we need two people to do a search, such as, say, a circle search or even a jack stay, then, yes, I'm going to jump in and help her. But we're up here on the beautiful Kerscott Lake. This is in Wilts County, North Carolina. And unlike our lake, which is Lake Hickory, where it's a public lake, this is actually a private lake this is ran by the army corps of engineers sometimes it's open sometimes it's not but this is a little public access that they've got for people whenever the lake is open but we're waiting on the client to get up here and then we're going to run down here to the docks real quick jump in and hopefully find what that client lost but like i said we're going to let tessa do everything tessa's kind of learning the ropes now and she's learning about search and recovery diving so the more that she can ask questions about then the hopefully the more successful her search is going to be so what do you think tessa you think we're going to have a success search yeah. absolutely what are some of the things that we want to ask somebody when they lose something in the water um, what they lost um, can you describe it uh, where you lost it and how how you lost it and how deep did you lose it yeah absolutely all great questions and hopefully if these questions are answered then we will have a very good successful search we've got a few minutes left before our client gets here i'm going to run over a couple little other search techniques for her. that way she's going to be much prepared or a lot better prepared once she gets in the water to hopefully find whatever's lost but guys stick around with us and hopefully we'll have a good successful dive okay so what item did you lose i lost my cell phone okay can you show me where you lost it around the dock sure so it was right about here. So like right in here? Yeah, right in this area. Okay. And it just went whoop, right down. How long has it been there? It's been there since uh, Friday afternoon. What kind of cell phone is this? An iPhone or a droid? iPhone. A phone. It's waterproof a model or a case on it that's waterproof? It has a case on it and okay. I'm not sure if it's waterproof. Though. Okay. But Typically, it's, it's if it is, iPhone they're, 12. they're, well, that's what mine is. I, I'm, yeah. I'm not sure to be honest if they are or not, but once we get it out in the event that it's still going, don't try to use it. Don't do anything with it. Take it home immediately and put it in a bag of rice and let it soak out all that moisture. Don't plug it up to charge it. Don't do nothing. Just okay. let it get that moisture soaked up. I know if you've got insurance on it, they typically want the phone back, but yeah. if you don't, to save the life of it, the best thing you can do is put it in a bag of rice for about 24 hours let it soak up all that water and that moisture and hopefully it'll start working again oh, if it don't great. then obviously you, you get a new phone yeah. but okay how deep of water did you drop your phone in? i don't know how deep it is here i think i think the last time i was up here doing a search is about 12 foot right here so it's it? not very deep yeah yeah so tessa i think what we'll do is we'll kind of just drop in since we know the general area and we know what our search radius is right so whatever our depth is that's going to be our search radius so we may tie a line to the dock real quick just to make it easier for us. If not, it should be right here in this general area. All right, sound good? And it's sound purple. Good. It's like lavender colored case. It's a lavender color? Uh-huh. So kind of like your hair bow here. Yep. Yeah, just, like just exactly like her Perfect. hair bow. Yeah, it's a lavender case and has a pop socket on the back of it. Okay. Awesome. What so, type of pop socket is it? It's just, it's built into the case. It's actually built into the case. Built it's not in. stuck on, it's built into the case. Okay. Cool. It's an OtterBox case. Okay. So let's go and throw some gear on. We'll jump in and find it for us. Sound good? Yep. Awesome. Maybe that OtterBox case will save it. Who knows? I mean, you know, maybe. <laughs> May if it's waterproof. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> Guys, this is going to be a very, very quick search for her. But what I want you to focus on throughout this video is the techniques that she uses to be successful there in this dive. Um, basically, once we get in the water, we're going to make sure everything's good to go. Make sure, you know, we've already done our pre-dive safety check on land, but we're going to make sure our flashlight's working. We're going to make sure that she can communicate back and forth if need be. But like I said, as soon as we go underwater, the first thing that she is going to do is go inverted. That means simply she's going upside down. And the reason you want to do that 
in this shallow water it doesn't take very much for your fins to stir up the bottom so as soon as we go under we go upside down and then of course once she touches down she's just going to grab onto a rock there she's going to make sure that she's neutrally buoyant and you'll see her profile you'll see that she's probably a good foot and a half to two foot up above the surface while she's searching and she's not necessarily horizontal but she's got her feet a lot higher than what her head would be um, and that way she can kind of kick she can do what's called a modified flutter kick so that she can move around but yet she's not stirring up the bottom also with her light as her light shines down she's using that to create reflections off different types of surfaces and if she gets that reflection back at her then she knows that she's hit some type of metal or even glass surface in this case it would be the cell phone that we're looking for and it's going to uh, shine back on her so that she knows that she's located it now we're actually looking at different things here i found a pair of glasses but you can see very quickly she was able to find the phone it was right there right where her light was shining so she was able to use the light to help her locate that phone but as we come up here she's going to give it to the customer and go ahead and end the dive out All right, Tessa, we just got finished up. How successful were we? Pretty good because we found everything we needed. Absolutely. What were we looking for again? We were looking for the lady's um, phone because she dropped it. <laughs> she dropped it off the dock. <laughs> and tell our viewers some of the search techniques that you used that made it a lot easier for us. Well, when I got it in the water and went down, I turned upside down so my fins wouldn't stir up the water. And then... When I got to the bottom, I stayed neutrally buoyant, and then I took my flashlight and started moving it around. And then, while I was reflecting off the bottom, then I found the foam where the lady said it was. Right, so we try to go inverted as soon as we go underwater, that way our fins don't stir up anything. You definitely stay neutrally buoyant throughout that dive, and you used your flashlight to reflect it off anything shiny. In this case, would have been the cell phone case, mm -hmm. right? So cool. So did we, what else did we do after that? We do a little bit of treasure hunt. What else did we find? Yeah, we found a um, motor. We found Right, so prop. we found the prop off a motor. And even found the callan, the top mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. What else do we find? A net. Found a fishing net. Anything else? And two pairs of sunglasses. Right, that's right. We did find two pairs of sunglasses. Oh, but I forgot to mention, you know what doesn't sink? What's that? Ario sunglasses. That's right, and this is a great segue into today's sponsor. Rios Nautical Eyewear is the industry's leader in floating sunglasses. Guys, we absolutely love their glasses, not simply because they sponsor our channel. We absolutely love their glasses because they don't sink. And I'll tell you another cool thing about Rios. They're very reasonably priced. If you think of a designer pair of sunglasses, you're easily gonna pay two to $300 for it. Now, at the marina, we used to sell a cheap pair of glasses, like a $20, $25 pair of glasses, because we knew people would lose them. They were okay losing them because they were $20, $25. But for a little bit more investment, for a $55 price mark, you can pick you up a set of Rios Nautical Eyewear. And I'm telling you guys, you will not lose these glasses. They are as light as a feather. They're clearer than glass. And what do they do? They don't they, sink. They don't sink. They float. So it's a great investment for you. If you're interested in your own pair, check out the link in the description below. It'll take you right to our online store where you can pick out whatever style, whatever frame you want, and whatever color of lens you want as well. Now, if there's a specific style that you're wanting or a color that you want that we don't currently have in stock, you can go over to rios.com and pick it out straight from the website. It's the exact same price. But guys, for a $55 price mark, you cannot go wrong with Rios glasses. But guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give us a big thumbs up. Definitely share it. If you think Tessa did a good job, give us a thumbs up as well. If you're interested in search and recovery diving, where can they get information on how to be a search and recovery diver? They can go diver? to the SSI um, 
search and recovery class. Right, so we'll have a link down in the description for that as well. Simply click on it. It'll talk about the class. It'll talk about the things that you're going to learn and how you can become a successful search and recovery diver. But guys, if you did like the video, once again, big thumbs up. Definitely share it. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Bye.